All right, so welcome back to uh, this truck, the episodes on this one. Hopefully this is gonna be the last video. It's gonna get y'all all the way up and running and driving. And then I'll probably do one more on the final after painting everything it all together. I'm not trying to drag this thing out. That way there's only four videos on it. So we're starting to assemble the front end now. And we're just gonna point out a couple things across uh, along the way in case you are doing a wrecked uh, Super Duty that will help you. And it'll also relate to pretty much any other rebuild. All right, so first off, these trucks have a ton of stuff going on with them. I mean, there is just a lot. It's all packed in. It's extremely tight, um, and it's very frustrating to work with. Uh, so when you, well, the first step I do is when I take this stuff apart, okay? Now, on any car in this shop or any car on this property, I can take it apart, put every nut and bolt, everything in a pile, and put it back together, even if I've never done the car, because it's kind of common sense. But with this truck, there's so many stuff, so many things going in and different angles and all that, that I do these a little bit different, even though I've already done a handful of them. So the first thing I do is when I take apart the broken like fan shrouds and stuff like that, is I put the bolts back in the Tenderman clips and uh, the pieces like that. And I save every single broken piece of this uh, vehicle. I put everything in the bed of the truck and I put all the bolts and everything so I understand which way they go. Um, like I said, you think that um you got this in a bag because you can do you know the mazdas or the chevys or the fords or whatever i promise you that you will be taking stuff apart and doing it twice if you don't uh do it like this if you're not a i guess a diesel mechanic that you mess with the fords all the time um so this is our busted radiator and as you can see when i took it apart that was already broke but i ran the bolts back in there so i don't lose them to eight millimeters and all that stuff here's the thing is when your new one comes in this is why you don't throw away your old one some of it's common sense, but you can still get this wrong, is you have to load all the Tenderman clips on this radiator. So all these clips, you have to put them on and they go in certain directions. So you can see all the ones on this side, the bolts go this way, ones on this side, the bolts go that way. Uh, I mean, that's kind of common sense, but you got, let's see here, two radiators on this truck that are really big, plus an AC condenser, fan shrouds, everything else. It, trust me, put your bolts back in and that will help you move everything over so i've got this laid out where i'm simply going to take my tenderman clips and i'm going to duplicate it off of this one exactly onto this one exactly like it is make sure everything looks right this one comes with the brand new rubber uh bushings or feet on there you got to make sure them are in there they'll come out your uh old one and then one thing when i first started doing these super duties that i would skip on and i got away with a couple times um but i failed a couple times and cost me major issues is the o-ring so all of these stupid coolant lines on these trucks are quick connects um, they're just more aggravating than anything there's an o-ring that sits up inside there this took me forever to figure out because i have nobody to teach me nobody to learn from and i had to figure it out myself uh, when i had a leak on a hose i took it apart examined it really closely and then you'll find that there is actually an o-ring right there okay see that we're not gonna pull that one out yet so what happens with this o-ring is as you can see it flattens it flattens from being in there all this time so it's best to order an o-ring kit before you're going to do one of these front impacts and replace every o-ring that you take apart um the part number on this o-ring kit it's going to be a dorman part number it's going to be 926159 um, this was not expensive to see here i think it was like 40 bucks it's pretty cheap but it's going to come with all of the o-rings take them out one at a time and then what i do is i just slightly lube them up with a little bit of wheel bearing grease vaseline assembly lube whatever you got just make sure they're slippery um so they when it goes when it goes on it clips in place you got the big one up in here which is kind of harder to get to okay so we'll fish this guy out right here and then we will match it up we'll take it out like that and then we'll match it up to a big one we'll go in here and we'll find which one it is let's see here gonna be that one right there okay and so we'll make sure we lay i'm laying my old ones over here and then my brand new one right here i'll lube this up with a little bit of lube try to do this one-handed and then we're just gonna push it back in there in that little slot go through do all your o-rings make sure you got brand new o-rings and all the coolant lines because if not you're gonna be trying to replace these with everything together and it is uh, not fun at all all right, well, we got the front end together. So now we're going to take it on a maiden journey. Even though the tires are still, the alignment's not right. Tires are all jacked up, turned in. We're just, just checking the gears. 
making short shifts. It ain't got no front end on it, no headlights, no bumper, no grill. Everybody looks at you like you're crazy because they can't use their brain and realize that you're just test driving a red car. There you go. So we got six gear. All right. Uh, and I do have a code. It's kind of hard to see the dash. Got a code for a heater circuit for the uh, DEF. Pretty sure that's that sensor that we replaced in. If you remember in the first video, it's just under there dangling. They ain't even got a hose hooked up to it. So it's probably not reading anything. There's stuff falling in the back seat. It's probably your reason why it's got a code. However, we will be 100% deleting this truck of everything that I can delete off of this thing. So don't want to romp on it. Exhaust is dangling underneath it. Sensors dangling underneath it. But I got six gear. And that's all I care about, honestly. Let's see here. Let's watch it fall back into it. There it goes. Kind of blurry, but it's there. Six gear. All right. So um, we're going to park this thing now. I've got a really big purchase. I thought this was big. And I went one up myself. Uh, coming in at two o'clock today. So I'm trying to get some stuff off of my property. I have a lot of vehicles in my way. Um, so we're going to park this thing. And I have a lot to cleaning up to do today. What a beautiful afternoon to sunset to make a little progress. on that guy tucked around the corner up in there. So uh, we are going to start throwing on the front suspension pieces to this truck. All right, so I'm one bar away from having everything that I need to put the front of this truck together. Um, so I figured that we'd go ahead and get started. That way we don't have so much to do later. Now, this is a Moog tie rod, okay? There's a part number on it. It's legit Moog part, says it right there. But this is like an open box. So there is a cotter pin. Here's our rubber boot. We don't have a bolt. Uh, I'm sure the one that comes off the truck will go right back on there. But this was, dude, this was like $18.99 plus I think like 30 shipping off eBay. So it's not a used part, but it's a, like an open box part. So it didn't come in an original Moog box. It come in the Amazon box, it looks like. Um, but somebody probably bought off a bunch of uh, inventory off of something or shop closing or something. And then they sold, uh, you know, it on eBay to discounted price. So this is why I use eBay uh, because you can literally get Moog parts, name brand parts for way cheaper than you can local. I mean, what's this piece local? What is it? 80, 90 bucks for that tie rod. That's the big tie rod, um, Moog. I mean, it's, it's definitely not freaking, uh, you know, cheap normally. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I feel like $18.99 plus 30 shipping is pretty freaking good steal for that bar right there. Now, this bar, let me get it out of the box. This is going to be the tie rod that connects the two tie rods together. Uh, basically, this is what links the two wheels together so they turn at the same exact time. Um, this was just a no-name brand piece, and I didn't want to go name brand on this one wanted to save money on this bar because it's literally just a freaking bar. Like, I don't care about a name brand on that. It doesn't have any moving parts or anything like that. It's just a sleeve. So this is the one that threads both sides, ties the wheel together. Like, there's no point in being obsessed over a name brand on something like this. So it's a, it's a old big guy, son. Um, what is that? It's like a plastic sleeve, it's broke. I guess it goes down here and take it off the old one probably. Yeah, looks like both sides have them. Then what matter? Should just go right underneath and be perfectly fine. Looks like it just slips on. We'll figure that out. Now the next box that we've got, it's got a couple more parts in it and it's big. Let me go get it. So uh, not super big, but packs a couple parts. This is gonna be the lift kit. So we're gonna to go with a leveling kit. This is going to be our sway, bag, sway bar drop brackets which we don't need to do right now for alignment we don't need them this is gonna be our shock extensions we'll need to throw them on our spring spacers um, let's see here our other spring spacer and then looks like the rubber isolator for the springs the little instructions bolts blah blah so the only thing i don't have in this package that some of the other kits offer is going to be the track bar relocation bracket and the reason why we don't have that is because we ordered a 
adjustable track bar um, that will allow us to put it anywhere we want it. So there's no reason to drop the track bar down when we can literally uh, just readjust it. So they should go on there, something like that. I think on this side, maybe the other side. So we'll read the instructions and see. But that's uh, that's quite a bit there. It don't look like a lot, but when you're dealing with this heavy duty of crap, this stuff just flat out sucks. It's heavy, it sucks, and uh, we need to just get at it. So let me stop chatting and uh, let me dive right in. Now, as we go ahead and hit these with a little PV blaster, we have got to start thinking about what we're gonna do with uh, these wheels situation. So these have some damage on them. And if you recall, I think it's this one that's bent. There's one that's bent. A brand new one's like 400 and some dollars. I can probably get it straightened for around 200 bucks. This one over here also has some scratches. I was originally going to run the factories with 37 inch mud tires on them. But now I'm kind of thinking um, maybe we should go ahead and just change them up. I thought about going ahead and doing a uh, what you would call it a 22.5 swap like I've done on the other ones where you put basically tractor trailer rims and tires on the truck um, but I'm not 100% sure what I want to do yet so leave in the comments what you think um, don't not really interested in 19.5s it's really never been my thing um, but I, I really don't know what I want to do yet so when changing these bars and you got your old one out you got your new one on what i've always done for the longest time now this is going to the alignment shop to get aligned and we're done i flip them around and well first i spray paint before i take it off so i just take spray paint and before i turn anything i just hit a little bit of spray paint on it and that marks exactly where it stopped at and then when i take it off i flip them around and then i mark back on this side pretty much where the end of this one stops and Normally that's pretty safe that that's going to get you in the ballpark to get you to the um, alignment shop. Now I guess they could be different in length. I laid them side by side using the shock mount hole on the edge of the table and they pretty much look the same length even though this one was bent. So um, that's just a good thing that you could do. It's really easy. That would get you pretty close back to the same alignment that the truck was enough to get you across town. When you're doing these um, lifts, Dude, use a freaking scissor jack. Scissor jack between the frame and the axle. Take it, crank it, that separates it. No reason to compress the spring. Uh, all the weights on the body, the jack stands under there, but there's currently no weight on it. We're gonna load in our spacer, put it back together. All right, so we got our spring spacer in, got our shock extension in down there. Don't have a bolt in that because of course, leave it to me to strip a bolt, so. Got to call the dealership in the morning. It takes this special T piece. Can't really get a wrench up in there. Uh, it'd be a pain in the butt to get a wrench in there. So I'm gonna call the dealership, see how much uh, this is, and uh, get another one in the morning. Tie rod ended up being wore out on this side. So this tie rod has some play in it. When it's on the vehicle, you can actually feel it move. So uh, that's a lose for me because I don't have that. So I'm gonna have to pay for that local and that sucker looked like it was like $125 when I looked it up. Uh, but this side is all buttoned up, shock extensions, shocks. Definitely should have upgraded the shocks. Uh, I meant shock extensions and springs are all in. I should have upgraded the shocks, but we're still not even 100% of this thing's gonna line out perfect. Um, some might ask, why are you putting a lift kit and all that on there if you don't even know if it's gonna align perfect? Because I'm 95% sure that this thing will go through alignment with no issues and not crab walk, nothing. That this thing will be perfectly fine. Uh, but there's still that tiny, tiny percent chance. That's why we haven't ordered everything else, but I can't like test the alignment. So I have to pay the shop to do the alignment on it. Therefore I need the lift on it and everything because if I don't uh, have the lift on it, I put it through alignment and it goes through alignment fine. Then I ordered the lift, the leveling kit, Put a leveling kit on it and then send it back through alignment after a leveling kit i will pay more because the leveling kit is cheaper than doing two alignments uh these leveling kits on these trucks are super basic they're cheap off ebay uh there's nothing to them so it's better just to go ahead and chunk it on there and hope and pray for the best off of experience i went ahead and bent my tabs on my upper 
brake line piece. So this tab was supposed to be in here. Basically it rolls it and makes this rubber hose go up like this. But now that the truck's lifted, we really need that hose to come out at a 90. Really it needs to go straight down, but I don't want to bend on the hard line too much. Uh, so I just flattened that little tab right there. Sucking into the frame and gave myself a lot more uh, play. We could always loosen that up if we need to, but the kit doesn't come with nothing to do about that. So in the morning, we'll order uh, the parts that we need and get this thing buttoned up. We're still waiting on our adjustable track bar, get that thing in and then we should be good to go. All right, so we got our, what was it like $120 freaking tie rod. Man, it is so hard to buy this stuff local, uh, spend this money. I don't normally put cheap stuff on my personal uh, trucks because I don't want to be on the road and deal with I don't want to deal with doing it twice. Uh, I don't do too cheap of stuff on things like this that are hard to do. This was, it's not Moog. I don't remember. It's uh, O'Reilly's, I think, in-house brand. Um, hopefully it's decent. It's just a tie rod. But we got to replace it. And then we got in the mail our no-name brand. Uh, it's just a track bar, adjustable track bar off of eBay. So this thing was only like 90 bucks, dude, adjustable track bar. So this is going to make sure that we can put that axle anywhere we want. And doing some research, if you look up the Super Duties, if you type in Super Duty axle off center, uh, there's a ton of these brand new trucks that the axles are not center because Ford used the same track bar no matter what spring package the truck got the truck come with like three different spring packages and they use the same track bar so that on that makes the axle not center so to center it you got to use an adjustable track bar being we possibly could have frame damage i don't think that is where the track bar is i think it's literally just the horn and the more i looked at it i stood way back outside today i think this one is actually in the more i look at it um when we put our bumper on that should tell me a lot more because it's going to line up to the fender somewhat and it should tell me which frame is rail is out of whack if it is it might not be enough to even matter but the point here is is that the adjustable track bar will also allow us to put that rear end or that front end anywhere that thing needs to be in here and hopefully our alignment will be perfect wheels will be nice and uh, symmetrical on both sides uh, so let me put these things together uh, this is boring there's no reason to really post this but i keep y'all updated on the journey all right so working on trying to figure out what's going on with this front end uh tonight that way i kind of know my game plan i've got one end cap i haven't took the other end cap off yet but when we put this cap up here we're pretty decent with this right here now it still needs adjustments and none of this adjusted the bumper can't go that way no more let's take a seat because it is hitting this tow hook right here because this hook is not centered of that square as you can see now this one over here we're not hitting the tow hook's not hitting but the bumper still needs to go that way in order to get our holes in there now i am in my frame bracket right there but as you can see i also have a lot of adjustment that can go that way um so everything is pointing towards the bumper has to go that way now if we check this we don't have no excellent way to check it so what we're doing is we're going to butt to this inner rail lay across the face of this and go to right here where it hits which is going to be 11 and three quarters and then we'll come over here to this side the reason why i say we don't have nothing good to check is because this side is right as you can see that plastic so we'll go in here to a known good point but in here come across the face again it's 11 and a quarter so 11 and three quarters over there and 11 and a quarter over here and that is a bigger gap out this is a smaller gap in our fender piece also sticks out more that way everything wants to come this way uh, but nothing can go this way because it's touching that tow hook so this goes back to where i feel pretty confident now that that frame rail is in that way and that frame rail needs to go this way now we want to go ahead and make this pull i guess this weekend before this thing goes to alignment because pulling on this can slightly budge that frame rail which is connected to the steering box which would throw your alignment all out if you remember this thing took a hit right down there as you can see okay right over there to the rail okay down there if you remember and it took a hit on this side uh which clearly that hook tow hook which mounts to that frame rail is too far that way so this is what it goes back to that you don't need 
you know, tremendous high-end equipment. When I started out, I was actually hooking vehicles to uh, trees and posts uh, using chains and basically literally putting them in reverse if it was forward and backwards or forward, you know, if it was a trunk hit and just yanking stuff out. Uh, you could do the same thing with a come along. We've done that before too, or a ramp, or porter power and push things apart. So if, if I didn't have a frame rack, I'd probably get a tree over there or something and I would chain the vehicle to the tree on that side and I'd put a two by four, four by four between the tree and that frame rail. And then I'd probably put a porter power between that frame rail and this one. And that would push it this way. That would secure the truck chained to the tree. That would have keep the distance of that rail to the tree and then your porter power would be your changing spread and that would open like this and push that rail that way so this is how i would do it in the backyard if i was uh repairing it and if i didn't have that guy up there but i do have that guy so i know i need to open this thing up an inch that's what's wrong compared to the other trucks that i have on the measurements is the rails need to be open spread an inch so when we strap this thing down we will drag that frame rail until we gain an inch between there and then I think everything's fine, or I think everything will be fine because then we should have the adjustments that we need uh, for our bumper. Well, we're coming up on 1 a.m. We're gonna call it a night. Uh, we got the prior with the bumper and primer. I didn't fix any dents. It's got like a dent right there. I don't think I'm gonna fix any dents on it. It's just the stuff is so minor. Nobody pays attention to it. Uh, sometimes I spend too much time fixing stuff that doesn't matter. And then there's a dent in the end of it. This bumper is actually pretty good for how bad it was. There's a dent right there, but I'm pretty sure that flare will cover that up. And inside the bumper is all rusty. Now I went ahead and washed it all out, but it's pretty nasty. So next week during the work week, I'll probably hang it from the chains in here in single stage, like black or dark silver on the inside uh, before I paint the outside or before i even sand the outside that's gonna be the next step is to go ahead and get the inside for tonight it's gonna be a wrap i got the suspension done so we got to do the frame pull and get that rail over but besides that this thing's uh moving right along and i feel like it's gonna go to alignment issue free all right so we got this thing back up here i've got the radiator all jacked up because of course i did not pull this frame rail whenever uh i had everything apart so i've literally took the radiator and picked everything up got eddie to cram some blocks underneath here because of our pegs if you remember when we repaired our peg which that thing's holding amazing i basically got it lifted up out of there because when i go to drag this i don't want any pressure on this little plastic peg of the radiator so i've got the whole radiator just i just unbolted this right here and just pick the whole unit up that way the frame rail can move and slide and the radiator is basically just floating it's attached with the hoses and everything but it, the radiator is not hooked to the vehicle currently if that makes sense um i should have did this like i said whenever everything was apart and then i could have got really good with it it went over three quarters of an inch really freaking easy um i was actually thinking that it wouldn't move easy that's why i didn't pull it whenever it was all apart, but it is. We've got it secured on this side. Uh, we're holding this frame rail in place because I don't think this one's bent. And we've got this one right here, which is loose right now, but it's up inside of a pocket on the rail. But as soon as I start pulling on it, you'll have some pressure on it. Um, on it Ed's not pulling on it. So we got like a quarter of more of an inch to get out of it. And then we should have our spread uh, back correct. Like I said, at first three quarters, watch out, Eddie. At wow. first three quarters, because I don't want it to pop your face off that first three quarters went pretty freaking easy well then get out of here i bet you don't think it's like speed up okay let's check that just trying to be careful with it hold that on that side ed right there that's it man that's we're looking for 30 and a half and that's it that's 30 and a half we started out at 29 and a half so we pulled an inch out of it and being the uh steering box is bolted to this rail i'm wondering now what do you think ed steering wheel gonna change well i mean well the steering wheel when i pulled it in here it was 100 percent upside down this time like a true 180 so now i'm curious when i pull it back out where it's going to be at because it was a true 
180 upside down. But there's my uh, one inch back in my rails. Uh, so that should be the exact same spread of all the trucks that I have on the property. I'm gonna double check the bumper real fast to spread on the mount holes right here. This one's still loose. Um, but we should be we should be good to go now on the bumper. That should have put us back over that way on that rail uh, so it mounts up. Uh, get rid of the problem we had this weekend. Well, almost 10 o'clock on Monday night, but I got this thing all together. The seat belts loaded back in, console bolted back in, everything rough wiped down, basically meaning I just vacuumed everything, wiped everything down. But the person before me uh, that had this previously had a dog in here. So it's a lot of dog hair in here. Um, which I'm not down with that. I like dogs, obviously, but uh, I don't want your dog hair all in my vehicle. So uh, this is basically a rough detail, what I call it. Uh, I need to go to alignment, make sure everything's good on it. Uh, basically, I wiped and vacuumed everything down as I put it together. And then when we get it back, uh, if it all checks out and everything is good to go, then we'll come back in here. It's dark in here now. But we'll come back in here and uh, put a good alignment on it. So we got seat belts back in here that works. Uh, modules loaded back in. I have not bought the airbags because it's about 600 bucks. I think it's about four to 600 bucks for the airbags. So we're trying to keep the cost down low until this thing checks off on alignment um that way if i have to go back to the auction at least it's not uh i'm not so deep in it but we're doing things that needed to be done we'd have to wait on uh the module and the seat belts and everything would be tore apart so i can drive it and move it around with no airbags in it but wanted to make sure we had seat belts in it and modules in case we needed to go ahead and sell the other truck really fast uh, or in case the truck sells fast we can drive this one with no front airbags and then uh put in the order for them but yeah that's uh that's it, dude. Got the frame rails pulled over earlier, and this thing is off to alignment tomorrow. I think I think we should be good to go. Got to still clean out a couple center console pieces and stuff like that, but overall, we're good to go. Got the grill, upper grill support back there. We're going to chunk the busted headlights. That one's busted. That one's good. Can't find another used one like that. I wish I could, but they're not on eBay. Um, used. I don't want to buy new. I want to buy one used one. So I wanted to make sure I made myself clear. <laughs> um, we need to throw these couple pieces together that we already have. Chunk the lights in it in the morning to drive it down the road. And then, dude, man, it's going to be on like Donkey Kong if it goes through alignment. And uh, this thing checks out, which it should. Lift kit on it. All the bars have been replacing the front sway bar link we still got to do. Uh, we'll probably cut that and straighten that or whatever. Make that work. Got to measure the distance of the spread. But I think this thing's about to be off to alignment. We'll see how that goes, and we'll see if this thing checks out. Well, it drives really good, besides the fact that the steering wheel is completely uh, upside down. Uh, we don't have any codes or any issues on the dash besides the airbag light, because obviously we have blowed out airbags. Um, besides that, dude, I mean, it drives, it drives good, especially for having a bent rim. It's got a little bit of shake right here. So what are we at, 42 miles per hour, so that 42 to 45 gonna have a little bit of shake from that front bent rim that's a pretty common uh miles per hour zone that you will find shakes in 40 to 45 um, and then the next zone that's common is highway speeds above 70. so we can get this thing over here to alignment drop this Hopefully thing off. this thing comes back with a clean bill of health on the alignment and uh hopefully the frame's not um something going on i don't know about i think everything's perfectly fine but i don't like to jinx myself and say that um so I will see y'all when we pick this thing up and then we're going to get this bad boy together. Smash that like button for me, y'all. I'll catch y'all in another video. Thanks.